here speaking for us. As I was sitting there, I thought, Lord, what would be a great way to introduce this man? This man needs no introduction. He needs no introduction at all. And I thought as I was standing there during praise and worship, who am I to even introduce this man? This man is a mouthpiece from heaven. He has been a mouthpiece from heaven for years. I have enjoyed watching him from afar at times when I have been in Houston and hearing his sermons and hearing about him and then had the, the awesome opportunity a few years ago uh, to have him come to Houston and be in a revival that we had there. And, and I'll just tell you tonight that you are in the presence of a general in the kingdom of God in Don Brinkle. <laughs> However, I do have a bone to pick with him. I was elected here as pastor on Sunday night, left to go back to Houston to take care of business there in my church. And on the following Wednesday night, after I was elected on Sunday, Brother Don Brinkle preached here in this sanctuary on Wednesday night and held his own pastoral election. I understand that he had my secretary to print out ballots and he voted on himself. <laughs> Someone called me that night after the service on Wednesday night. They called me there in Houston here from the church and they said, Pastor, I'm sorry you're no longer our pastor. You've been replaced already by Brother Don Brinkle. And I said, well, if that's the case, then so be it. I'll, I'll accept that. This is a wonderful man of God. And when I say man of God, I don't say that lightly tonight. My prayer is that when I grow up, I could be a thimble full of what this man is and what this man has done. His birthday was last Sunday. He was 86 years old. He still preaches like he's a teenager. He still has fire in the chimney just like he's a young man. And would you welcome to this pulpit tonight my friend, Brother Don Brinkle. I don't know who's going to speak. <laughs> that sounded awful good. Let's have another repeat of that. <laughs> uh, what a night, what a night, what a night. Well, he said everybody on the platform, the singers are going, so that lets me go tomorrow night. <laughs> the pastor said he couldn't sing. I, could, I sing as good as any of them. It's just delivering that's where I'm having my trouble. <laughs> Cut out for a singer is sewed up wrong. But it's a delight to be in this church, and I'm so thankful for our pastor. I'm, I've, I'm, Brother Brooks, you're my pastor, and I love you, and Sister Brooks and their family. We just blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I, uh, I've been a horse. I was a little horse last night, but I'm big horse this evening. And... Uh, the sheriff of Salisaw tried to get me not to preach, but I wanted to preach if I was hoarse. So I'll go just as far as we go, and if I run out of steam, I've got 11 stood up with Peter, and I think there'll be plenty to stand up for me. But it's a thrill tonight to be in this church. I thank God for this church. Wonderful church, wonderful people, all but two or three. But I'm telling you, we're doing good, and God has blessed us, and we're thankful for his blessing. Amen. Thankful for this choir that worships God. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. I'm thankful for God's blessing. I kind of overdid it this morning preaching. I kind of stripped a gear. But I trust tonight God will minister to us. Amen. The Holy Ghost will touch our lives. Yeah. We'll be touched of an almighty God. Every service counts. I said every service counts. You can't afford to not have every one of them in the plan of God. If you have your Bibles tonight, we'll get right to the Word. I want to thank the Lord for His blessing, and I thank the Lord for the good report. When I came in tonight, and my son-in-law said the same thing, 
my, what preaching you had this morning, and I thought, here I am, horse, and, and hopping along and have to follow that. <laughs> what a message they heard. He preached on digging wells. We're going to climb mountains tonight, so we're going the other way. <laughs> a lot of difference between a well and a cistern. Somebody has to fill up a cistern. <laughs> Not been in churches that needed it. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the 121st Psalm? Psalms 121. I will lift mine eyes under the hills or mountains, one translation reads, under the mountains from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Which made heaven and earth. No other God is like that God. He is the creator, the designer. He's the internal, everlasting, immutable, unchangeable Lord God Almighty. Let's bow our heads and ask his blessing on this service tonight. Will you pray that God will touch this preacher? Father, we thank you tonight that your infallible word will never change, never alter. We're glad for the eternal purpose of God to be fulfilled in this tabernacle tonight. There be a soul in this building without God on their way to eternal damnation. I pray God the Holy Spirit would speak to their heart. Baptize believers in the Holy Ghost. Touch us and lift us above our limited ability. Oh God, let us drink from living fountains and know that glorious river of life. Touch us with a fresh fire from the altar too. Minister to the people in this tabernacle, I pray tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. In your Bible, there are 281 mountains. 281 different mountains. 35 valleys. That tells me there's more mountains than there is valleys. You know, we're going to be in a valley, but there has to be a valley if there is a mountain. But God Almighty has a mountain for your life tonight. I begin to read the word. I made a study of God's mountains. I tried to read about each one of them, and I don't have time to preach on 281. I have time, but you don't. And so tonight I want to speak to you on some mountains that have helped me out in the crisis of life. I want to begin with the first mountain in the Bible, and the first mountain in this Bible was Mount Arat. Do you realize one of the greatest miracles in this book is the flood and God's protecting hand to save the Adam's race? I was in the country of Turkey, and I preached in Armenia, and when I went to Armenia, they said, right up there is Mount Arat. I said, I'd like to go up there. He said, you can't. There's ice on top of it. But they said, the ark is still upon that mountain. But Turkey won't let you go up on that mountain. But the ark is there. Do you realize what a miracle? God spoke to a man by the name of Noah, built a boat over 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, three stories high, and carried enough food to last a year and 17 days days, there's in the ark 17 days, and made the skunk so he wouldn't stink while he's in there, and made the giraffe bow his neck to get in the door, he's God big enough to handle every situation, <laughs> amen, and he's, I'm convinced that it was the greatest miracle, he must have had a water system on the inside, there must have been, he could have gone fishing, but the water was too deep to fish him because it covered the mountain heights. And Mount Arat is 16,873 feet high. That means this water was pretty well on the earth. In fact, I was out on the Black Mesa in New Mexico a few years ago, and I found sea uh, creatures that were petrified. I found oysters that were petrified. I carried them in, have a display in the West Plains College. And they found an elephant leg on top of that mountain. So God Almighty is a God of all power, all might, all dominion. Thank God for victory tonight. Well, here it is. Mount Arat. 
It's where God let the ark land. I'm glad that God will take care of you by faith. Noah being warned of God prepared an ark to the saving of his house and he got his whole family on the ark. One of the greatest things you can have is your household washed in the blood, saved by grace, ready for the rapture, looking for the king, and walking in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Mount Arat, but on that mountain, God gave us one of the greatest promises. When Moses, whenever Noah got off of the ark, he built an altar unto God and offered the clean animals unto God as a sacrifice and God was well pleased and he came down and he put a sign in the sky. I'll never destroy it again by water. You'll never have another flood. We may have a little flood that'll overflow 71 or it may overflow some of the streets in Fort Smith but God said you'll never drown again. But watch out, this old earth is about ready to burn. He said it would destroy it by fire and melt with fervent heat. Some time ago, I was watching a program on TV way in the night. Showed the sun, a furnace. It's the told how many th hundreds of millions of degrees it is. And it said someday... Someday scientists believe that the earth will be sucked into the sun and will melt with the fervent heat. I got in my Bible and it said, Look, thank God, what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation because this earth and the works therein shall be burned up, but nevertheless we according to the promise look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, hallelujah. That's enough to shout about. Well, old Mount, Marat, old Mount Arat had a promise on it, a rainbow in the sky. God Almighty gave us a promise that we could live on. Then I want to hurry my time will get away. Mount Moriah, the hardest mountain you'll ever climb. God said, Abraham, take thy son, thy only son, Isaac. He's the only son of promise. The other one was out of order. Amen. Yeah, he had another one, but Abraham, take thy son Isaac. Isaac was a young man. He started up the mountain, left sister Sarai at home. She didn't know where he was going. Could no doubt she couldn't have stood it. But Abraham started up that mountain with a load of wood and with a enough to build a fire when they got there. His servants went to the foot of the mountain. When they got to the foot of the mountain, he said, tarry here. I and the lad go yonder to worship God. No organ to play, no choir to sing, nobody to help. We're going to worship God. When you call doing the will of God worship, you're getting ready to have a revival. Obedience is the sign of true spirituality. I may shout, I I may sing, I may do a lot of things, but the real sign of spirituality is obedience to God Almighty. If we obey him, his blessing will be upon our lives. I looked again, go to Mount Moriah. I, that old general must have had the heaviest heart. I cannot comprehend the Abraham walking up that mountain with that boy. Every step he took, he realized that it could be his last. Every step up the mountain, the boy asked him, here's the wood and here's the fire, but where's the lamb? Old Abraham must have shed a tear and said, God will provide himself a lamb. I know he's been provided. We're going to talk about it tonight. God will provide himself a lamb. Well, it happened on that same mountain. On that same mountain range a little bit later, our Savior was the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Old Mount Moriah. And the Lord gave him a promise. The trying of your faith will bring a promise from God. You didn't hear me. We'll try it again. When God, you're in the testing ground, get ready. There's something good going to follow. 
And here's what God said to Abraham when he offered his son and he drew that knife and would have cut him head off and would have offered him a sacrifice. And an angel cried, hold it, Abraham, don't slay him. We've got a lamb, a ram caught in a thicket. Let me shout today, God wants to know if you mean business and the trials of life are there to prove it. Amen. And here's the promise that followed. And he said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that I will bless thee and multiply thee. I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, as the sand of the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of thine enemies. <laughs> What a promise. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, saith the Lord. Well, I'm shouting in Abraham's seed tonight, for we have a Savior that came from the seed of Abraham, of the line of the tribe of Judah, the offspring of Jesse. He's a root out of dry ground. He's altogether lovely, the rose of Sharon. Hallelujah. Well, we love him tonight. Mount, oh, Mount Moriah the mount of obedience, the mount of testing. You'll be tested along the way. You'll be tried along the way. I really don't understand. Sister Brankle's in the rehab center over on the other side. I pray for her every day, cry to pray for her, pray for her nearly all night some nights, crying and praying, and we get a touch from God, but not healing. But I want to shout... I just want to shout, everything's still all right. We're saved, washed in the blood, looking for the rapture, waiting for the king, and we're going to be healed either here or there. There's no more sickness, no sorrow, no suffering, no pain, no heartache. Gaze, God, it's real. We're going that way. <laughs> Mount Moriah. When you've climbed that mountain and come back down with your son, you can dig wells then. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a promise. If you have your Bibles, then Mount Rephidim. Now, Rephidim is a sad place. Pastor Moses, I've always felt sorry for Moses. Had about, what was it, two and a half million members, some of every kind. I pastored some of them. When they got to Rephidim, they complained. They didn't have any water. They fussed. And they chided and said, we're going to stone you. <laughs> they, when, when the pastor doesn't have enough water, <laughs> I've been there. Don't hold an election till next week. <laughs> and so they were out of water and they chided him, fussed and murmured and complained. Doesn't take much size to criticize. <laughs> I'm gonna come over here. I think I lost some. I told it in this church, no doubt. I preached here a lot of times since 1950. But a fellow walked down the street and saw a taxidermist shot, and there was an old owl sitting in the tree. And the taxidermist said to his friend, I wish I'd have had a chance to fix that owl. I, I could make him look like an owl. Anybody can tell that doesn't look real. And about the time he was criticizing that the old owl jumped up on another limb. <laughs> doesn't take much size to criticize. <laughs> Amen. I can nearly find fault with anything. I like the way this choir is saying amen. I got two of them. I'm telling you, it's real. <laughs> and they chided with Moses. And... Old Moses said, well, Lord, what shall I do? They're ready to stone me. And he said, get up there on a rock and take that rod in your hand and hit that rock. And it poured out water, enough to water two and a half million people. Who can I tell you, God can supply your need in a barren and thirsty land. Woo. I don't know whether it was real or not. When I went to Israel, we went down into Moab. 
and went down to Petra, and then we went over, and they told us when we went up on that mountain that this is, there's a stream coming out of that mountain. And they told us this is the one that Moses hit. Well, I, I kind of doubted it because I thought it'd be bigger than that. Uh, it's still a flowing all right, but I, I just kind of believe if God made one come out of that mountain, you better grab your kids. <laughs> so, come on, he does things in a big way. When he turns water into wine, he'll make over 100 gallon at one time. Whenever he feeds the 5,000, there's enough for 12 baskets full after you get left. Woo! Of course, I know a few preachers wasn't there, but I'm telling you it's going to be great. God is great, and he's mighty, and he's powerful, and he's abundant. Well, let's talk about it. Rephidim, Rephidim. Amalek come out to fight. Now, Amalek's a type of the flesh. Just as sure as you get blessed, you'll meet Amalek. And then he has a wife, Sister Amalek. <laughs> I've never had quite as much trouble with Amalek as I did his wife. But anyway, Amalek will come out. You'll just meet Sister Amalek. She'll, she is a troublemaker. I thought I'd tell you. I don't think it'd be wise to tell you because this does go out on the news and she might be listening. <laughs> Sister Amalek, I love you. I, I put up with you. <laughs> Let me talk to you. Amalek came out against him. Now don't think that there won't be somebody that'll not think you're the grandest thing on the block. Say amen. I was there I, I preach. One of my men came to me and said, when is the next board meeting? And I said, it's the first Sunday after I leave. <laughs> <laughs> my brother called one night, and I was in a, bro brother, a board meeting, and I had good men. And he said, I want to talk to the chairman of the board. I thought, we're deciding right now. He'll be ready to talk to you in a minute. Let me talk to you tonight. Am Amalek came out. Amalek came out and withstood him. And they fought with him. And they fought. And Brother Moses said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Joshua, you go down and tackle him. And I'm going up here in the mountain and I'm going to pray. Woo. This is the mount of intercessors. Let me talk to you. If there's any mountain that's helped me, give me intercessors in a church. People that know how to pray. God wondered there were no intercessors. Somebody that'll weep. Somebody that'll cry. Somebody that'll fast. Somebody that will t contend until victories are won. Battles are defeated and God is honored. Hallelujah. <laughs> intercessors intercessors. What a privilege. I've been down with my daughter this week. Her husband, you know, my son-in-law passed away suddenly and I, I felt so sorry for her. She came up for our convention and was so blessed. You were so kind to her and I had to go down with her to help her with her problem. I've been down there all week but that little girl impresses me. She, I know she's mine. I can't help it because she's good. <laughs> Somebody said, she sure is good looking. She, where did she get her looks? I said, she got it from me because I don't have any left. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a little dandy. We got down there, and I, part of the time she was sad. But at night, we'd have prayer meeting, and that little girl would <laughs> touch God come into the throne room, drink out of that fountain, speak in tongues and love God, and get up and say, Daddy, isn't God good to us? Isn't he, doesn't he know what he's doing? He's almighty. I can tell you, he knows the way through the wilderness. And Moses is up in the mountain, and I don't know why you have to get your hands up to get the baptism, but just help I, every time I'd let my hands down, did you, did you seek for the Holy Ghost and just wish somebody to hold you up a little? Man, I'd hold mine up and I'd, glory, 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 glory. And he said, get your hands, glory, glory. None of you been there. 
You didn't get it then. I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't know why you have to have your hands up to get the Holy Ghost, but I guess when the reception is not good, get a higher antenna. <laughs> Hallelujah, he'll hear you. Old Moses was up in the mountains and, and he's praying and he had his hands up and they noticed something. When he had his hands up, Israel prevailed. Woo, the battle's going good. Put it down and the battle was lost. Come on, church, let's try it one time. Let's stick our hands just as high as they can in the air and praise God for victory. He will prevail. He's the God of the battle for you. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Aaron and her, I, who'd name a kid her? Johnny Cash had one named Sue. <laughs> her and him. <laughs> Hello, her. I've seen few I couldn't tell. <laughs> Say, man, all you boys need to look like a boy. Act like a boy. You don't need to look like a gorilla, but you need to look like a boy. <laughs> oh, you girls look like girls, dress like girls. But anyway, I'll hurry. That's not in my message. But Aaron and her, her and him held him up. And as long as he held him up, Israel prevailed. This tells me intercessory prayer will conquer the enemy. Intercessory prayer will do miracles. Hallelujah. Intercessory prayer. Pray, pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I shout when I get to old Mount Rephidim. Thank God for that mountain. Well, Mount Sinai means just that much to me. You see, Moses, God said, Moses, come up in the mountain. And he covered that mountain with fog, smoke. And... He said, don't let a man or a beast touch it that's unclean. They'll die. This is a holy mountain because God's there. Anywhere God is, is holy ground. I said, God is there. That makes the ground holy. This is a holy tabernacle because God's here. Hallelujah. No place to complain. No place to doubt. No place to fuss. No place to do anything but worship the Lamb. It's holy ground. Live clean and walk God. But anyway, Moses, Mount Sinai, God said, Moses, come up. And the mountain shook and trembled. The whole mountain. I noticed mountains shake. When God gets in a place, there's a shaking. The Bible said in chapter 4 of Acts, the place shook where they were assembled. The Bible said that Calvary, the mountain shook. Because of the presence of God. He's a divine God. He's holy God. Thrice holy God. Let me hurry. My time's going to get away. But Moses went up and God wrote with his finger on a rock. Enough power in the end of his finger to engrave a rock. Why did he put it on a rock? Because it's an eternal commandment. Not ten suggestion. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness unto God in heaven above and earth beneath. Thou shalt not bow down to any other God. Oh, hallelujah. Brother, our God is God. I got news for you. There is no other God. All others are fakes and liars. Our God is truth and love and power and grace and mighty and good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, let me hurry. And then he said, remember the Sabbath day and stay at home. <laughs> I mean, be, uh, keep it holy. I, I like that. Now, I know ours is not the Sabbath, but we got a greater day than the Sabbath. For he's Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. Say amen. We're, we're here to, on the Lord's day. He arose the first day of the week. They took up tithes on the first day of the week. And we try to. But I'm telling you, <laughs> you didn't get it. I'll try it again. <laughs> On the first day of the week, and then remember the Sabbath then, keep it holy. 
And then he said, Honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long on the earth. And my mother would scare the daylights out of me when I was a little boy. She said, if you don't obey your mother and dad, the Bible said the eagles of the valley will come and pluck your eyes out. I could just see birds are coming. <laughs> say amen. <laughs> Woo, my mom quoted a scripture when she whipped us. She'd say, the Bible said, don't spare the rod. <laughs> I said, I think you'd get by with not quite so much. <laughs> amen. My, my dad... Whipped me, one, I told you, whipped me one night three times. All three of us boys in the same bed. Didn't turn the lamp on, didn't light a lamp. It was dark and I pitched and we never had electricity. It, and I knew better. We didn't have sheetrock on the ceiling and I skinned a cat. And I skinned one too many. He hollered in there and said, you boys settle down. And I was having more fun than I'd had. And I... They did too. When dad came in, Jim went behind the bed. Joe rolled up in the cover, and I was left with the elements. <laughs> dad reached in there and got a boy, and he warped me good and warped me good with a razor strap and turned me loose and reached and got me again. Whoop! <laughs> and I thought, well, I can take that, but he reached back and got me the third time. I said, Dad, you've had me twice. He said, this is makeup for other times. You didn't get it. <laughs> Jim said, that's when I believed in the doctor of substitution. <laughs> ah, here we are getting ready for heaven. Thou shalt not bow down to any other God. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's telling lies. Woo. Nobody in Washington is going to heaven then. <laughs> thou shalt not lie. And then he said, and thou shalt not covet. Folks, this book means exactly what it said. Thank God for the law. We know right from wrong. We know how to get to heaven. We know what God expects. It's wonderful. Yes. Hallelujah. We know the way. We know the way. Mount. Nebo, let me talk about it. I'm going to hurry. Moses, Moses pastored that church for 40 years. That's a long time. Had murmurs and complainers. Had believers and prayers. He had a lot of folks. But one day they came to him and said, Moses, we don't have any water. And the preacher ought to be a water boy. And so Moses said, what shall we do, God? What shall we do? And he said, speak to the rock. And Moses got over there, and he'd been listening at him. And he took that rod, and he said, you rebels, come and get it. <laughs> I think that's the amplified version, but that's the way it happened. And when he did, God said, uh-oh, you missed it. Now, I, I, every time I read that, I'd let Moses in. I would, all he did, he didn't chew tobacco, didn't drink, didn't dip snuff, pretty level-headed without it. He didn't drink Bud Dumber. He didn't cuss. He, he didn't not wear enough clothes. He, you know, he was just a, I just, I just, all he did was hit a rock and he got water. God worked. And I, I'd have let him in. But the Lord couldn't do it. Because if he had of everybody would said, you let him off. I can get by. I don't have to obey all the way. God means exactly what he say. If that'll keep you out of the promised land, you and I need to walk softly in the presence of God. For he means exactly what he said. I said he means exactly what he said. And... God said, Moses, I'm sorry, but you can't go to the promised land. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold the funeral service for you. And I only know two that showed up at the funeral. God didn't want to announce it because he didn't want them to make a shrine out of it. 
We're not to worship man. Worship God. Say amen. God doesn't want memorials. He doesn't want shrines. He wants us to look up. Come on. Look unto him. Doesn't need a memorial. Doesn't need a shrine. And so God had a funeral for Moses where nobody would know where he was buried. Nobody knows yet. All we know, he went up Mount Nebo and to Pisgah. And in a little valley up there, he buried Moses. That's all we know. And two showed up at the funeral. The devil showed up. <laughs> and he's acclaiming him. He's mine because he disobeyed you. He's mine. And Michael was sitting in the service and he turned around and said, the Lord rebuke you. I think he said shut up too. But I'm not sure. <laughs> the Lord rebuke you, devil. I'm, I'm telling you. It doesn't matter if you'll live for God and walk with God. He can handle every situation in your life. I'm coming to a close. Let me take you to the Mount of Promise. Nothing, nothing is as wonderful as the Mount of the glorious blessing of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. It doesn't say blessed are they that are poor financially. If they had of, I'd already been with Enoch. <laughs> we are so poor, we couldn't pay attention. I said, he didn't say blessed are the poor financially or blessed are the poor that sit in the back of the church and, and read the evangel. <laughs> we don't get one now. So that helped us. But anyway, we're back. <laughs> blessed are the poor in spirit. And I looked that up in the Greek dictionary and it said blessed are are the destitute for the things of God. Woo, that's what I believe. Blessed are the destitute. Blessed are they. And then he said, blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are the meek. They'll inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed, come on, they'll be called the children of God. And then he said, blessed, blessed are you when men shall revile you and say all manner of evil against you false or rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Hallelujah. It's a mountain, a blessed mountain. Blessed be the lamb forevermore. I bring it to a close. The greatest mountain that's ever been is Mount Calvary. More happened on that mountain that's happened on any spot on planet Earth. Two, four thousand years of sins were washed away on that mountain. Old Testament saints Offered a fleecy lamb and a little goat or a red heifer or a turtle dove. But it never washed away their sin. The blood of bulls and goats could never cleanse a sinner. It only was a promissory note. Hallelujah. One day, one day, the Lamb of God will be offered and there will be a sacrifice that will cleanse every sin from Adam until now. Hallelujah. And the future generations. I was on that mountain. It's my sins that nailed him to the cross. It was my hard heart that was the hammer that drove him in his body. On Mount Calvary, more happened. More happened. In while he was there on that mountain, suffering, bleeding, and dying, grace dispensation moved in. For grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. And now whosoever will, it's not just a high priest once a year. But I can come tonight, January the 17th, 2016. And I can walk into the holy place and can ask of him. And he will grant it according to his riches in glory. When that veil was rent in twain, somebody must have hollered and said, boys, you can turn your little sheep loose. We won't need him. <laughs> the veil has been rent in twain. Oh, hallelujah. And now it doesn't matter who you are. Whosoever will can come. 
You may be in trouble. You may not have money. You may not have anything. You may have lived the wickedest sin in town. But you're welcome tonight. You're welcome to come into the holy place. Come on in. Bring your sins. They'll be white as snow. There's only two sides to Calvary. Only two sides. There's the side of the righteous and the side of the wicked. Tonight, you may be a good person. You may sing in the choir. You may preach. You may do a lot of things. But if there's sin in your heart, you're on the side with every rapist, every murderer, every liar, every thief, every sodomite, every filthy sin there is. And the same hell that will have that drunkard and the drug addict and the vile and the sinful and the wicked and the cursing and the liar is going to have that person that rejects Calvary in the same hell, the same lake of fire, the same sorrow, the same cry. Please, God, send a drop of water and cool my tongue. I'm tormented in this flame. I wish that men could see hell. I'd rather serve a lifetime sentence in prison than one week in hell, two nights in hell. I'm telling you, folks, if you're not right with God, if you're not sure, if you've got sin in your heart, run to God because Calvary's open tonight. The blood of sprinkling has been offered, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. I, I, let, me, let me emphasize that. You're a new creation. He that sinneth is of the devil. And they that are born of God doesn't keep sinning. He that's born of God overcometh the world. I want to preach it tonight. Don't take a chance on missing it. You're that close to heaven. But you're a long ways from it. If you allow things in your heart, they'll keep you out. The Bible said, now the works of the flesh are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, Variance, emulation, wrath, strife, strife, sedition, heresies, drunkenness, reveling. And they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. And the book said there shall in no wise enter into the city anything that defileth, worketh abomination, or maketh a lie. But they whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. I've seen thousands kneel at an altar. I've seen hundreds leave that didn't surrender their life to God. Not enough to come to the altar. It takes total commitment to God Almighty. There's only one case, only one case of deathbed repentance in the whole Bible. I wish I, wish I knew that it was absolutely real. I have some doubts about it. I wish I didn't. But only one case, and that's the thief on the cross. Right in the darkest hour when the sun wouldn't shine and the feathered fowls went to roost in the daytime, one man cried out, Lord, remember me when you get to your kingdom. If you mean it tonight, God will remember you. But if you don't remember him now, you'll hear son remember somewhere in hell. Son, remember thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things. I want to talk to you tonight if there's anyone in this building that has any question about your soul, there wouldn't be enough money in the bank to talk me to going out of this church without kneeling in an old-fashioned altar, giving my heart to God. I, 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 every day of my life, every day, I stand over there in my little apartment with hands up crying, saying, God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for salvation. I'm not worried I'll make it with financing, but I thank you for salvation. The greatest miracle that could ever happen in this church is a man be born again. In a moment's time, you can walk down this altar outside of Calvary, lost and on your way to eternal damnation. But in a moment's time, <laughs> you can be a brand new creature. Hallelujah. And you can have a hope of heaven and your name placed in the book of life. Whosoever name was found written in that book, 
whosoever's name was not found written in that book was cast into the lake of fire where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. I wonder tonight, as this mountain, has it reached you tonight? I wish every one of us would say, Lord, is there something in my heart? Have I got a grudge? Have I got a, some wickedness? Is my heart clean? Is my heart right? Wash me, Lord, and I'll be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. I've gone home a many a night and seen people leave the church unprepared to meet God and kneel down and say, God, did I do everything I should do? Did I preach it plain? Did I make it simple? Did I help them? Holy Spirit, would you visit us tonight? Bow your heads in prayer. Thank you tonight for the cross. That blood, that precious blood. No more like it ever found in eternity. It's the cleansing blood of the Lamb. Oh God, tonight, turn the searchlight of heaven on our soul. Let me look down into my heart and see if there's anything there. Wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, drunkenness, reveling. Anything that would separate me from the love of God. If the trump of God sounded tonight, would I hear that call? Preached a revival in the state of Georgia. And there was sin in that church like I'd never seen. And I went back and preached a revival nearby. And one of the deacons in that church was over visiting that pastor that I visited. He came over and grabbed me around the neck and said, Brother Brankel, thank you for preaching like you did. I didn't like it when you preached it, but you saved my soul from hell. I was justifying myself living in sin. I was an adulterer. I was a liar. And a man that will lie to you will steal. I'm telling you, it's serious business to be without God tonight. I wonder if there's a hand, how many hands in this building would just slip up your hand and say, pray for me. I need help. I want to go to heaven. And I've got some things I need to get right. Could I see your hand? Hold it high. Yes, I see it. Yes, I see it. <laughs> God bless you, folks. God bless you. I'm telling you, this is the night to settle the account. I want everybody that knows your names in the book of life to raise your hand just as high as you can get it. You know I've got my sin under the blood. Raise it high if you mean it. If you're saved, surely you're not ashamed of Jesus. Lift it high, lift it high, lift it high, lift it high. I know my name's in the book. I know I've got my sin under the blood. If I couldn't raise my hand on that, there's no way you could talk me out of not going to this altar tonight. God's mercy is in this tabernacle. I wonder if there's another hand would like to go up. I don't want to leave anybody out and say, pray for me. I'm not living like I should. I'm not where I ought to be. That's right. God bless. Would there be another? Just a moment. I may have missed it. It's a large auditorium. My Father, God, I wonder if there's somebody that has been saved. You've lived for God. You know what it is, but tonight you, you've drifted. You're not where you used to be. You can remember a day when you walked with God, but that's not tonight. Would you raise your hand? Yes, I see it. I see it. There's room at the cross for you tonight. I don't want to make an altar call light. I'm dealing with eternity. This could determine where we'll be one billion years from now. Eternity, eternity without God is beyond my thoughts. I want you to stand as reverently as you can with a prayer on your lips. For only the Holy Spirit can knock on a heart. I can preach 
but the Holy Spirit has to convict. Hallelujah. Without a moment's hesitation, our singers are going to sing, but really it wouldn't take a song to get me to the altar. If I need Jesus, I'd start down the aisle right now. Start down the aisle while we sing. Come and meet me in this altar. Don't wait another minute. The devil will try to talk you out of it. Come on right now. God bless you. Wash my 